Hello, everyone. This is Tom Fox, and I'd like to welcome you to the Daily Compliance News. The Daily Compliance News is an offering of the Compliance Podcast Network. March 20, 2019, the Risky Business Edition. We begin with a story about the 2020 Olympics, which are going to be held in Tokyo, where the head of the Tokyo Olympic Committee has stepped down amid allegations of a vote-buying scandal that French investigators are taking a look into that they believe helped secure uh, Tokyo as next year's Olympic um, host. Takasuna Takata, the 71-year-old head of the uh, or IOC member uh, and head of the uh, 2020 Olympics for Tokyo, is stepping down. He has continually uh, maintained his innocence in this, yet um, he said it was time for a younger generation to lead the Japanese body. Next up, in a filing with the federal court in San Francisco, the Securities and Exchange Commission said it is stunning that Elon Musk did not follow the order uh, he agreed to uh, following his settlement with the SEC on tweeting as he did not seek pre-approval for any of his tweets in the months since the uh, judge uh, signed that order requiring him to do so. The uh, lawyer for Elon Musk, uh, obviously in a very difficult position, said that he wants to uh, add a rejoinder to his filing claiming that uh, the Securities and Exchange Commission uh, uh, has agreed basically in negotiations uh, in a way that would undermine this particular um, settlement. So, uh, but once again, the parties are not focusing on the fact that once you ask a judge to get involved, the judge is empowered to impose any sanction he or she may deem appropriate, a new fine, additional control, and even suspension or barring uh, Musk from running the company. So, you obviously violate a court order at your own peril. Uh, Elon Musk seems to be not too worried about that peril. Next up, Cambridge Analytica, Analytica in the United Kingdom. Uh, certain creditors are alleging that the former owners of the company are really controlling its bankruptcy and they're going to wrap our receivership in England and they're going to wrap it up before any of the files are released. It's simply just a fraud on the court or the bankruptcy receivership in England uh, that they will reopen business uh, in another form and they're trying to have the current administrator selected by Cambridge Analytica thrown out and the Crown appoint a receiver. If this happens, it will certainly open up the files for continued review by the uh, British government, and obviously they are not happy about uh, Cambridge Analytica's uh, theft of data and use in the United Kingdom. Our final story is about Deutsche Bank and its risky business with Donald Trump. You can check it out on the front page of today's New York Times. I'm back from PodFest Expo 2019. I've got a lot of great new ideas around the podcast and the Compliance Podcast Network. Stay tuned for them all. This is Tom Fox. If you have any ideas for the daily compliance news, please feel free to email me at tfox at tfoxlaw.com. I'd love to hear from you. As you may know, we've had several new offerings on the Compliance Podcast Network. One of those includes Popcorn and Compliance, where Jay Rosen and I Take a look at compliance through the lens of movies, both current, contemporary movies, and classic movies. Also premiering in December. And finally, Mary Shirley and Lisa Fine have premiered their new podcast, Great Women on Compliance. I hope you will check that out. It's a great podcast series. We have several other offerings that are in production that will go live hopefully in Q1 of 2019. I hope you will check back to see the offerings on this Compliance Podcast Network.